This is my little boy, Louis. He's six weeks old. This is his very first TEDx talk. And I'm wondering, I think like all parents, what is he thinking? What is he feeling? Maybe a little bit more, because I'm a neurologist and a consciousness researcher, and that question really fascinates me. What can we say about little Louis' consciousness? It's actually a very difficult question that historically was the field of religion and philosophy. So if we would look back at the old Christian scholars, they would consider that consciousness would suddenly appear right at the moment of conception, as you can see here in this wonderful painting, the moment the spirit, the soul, enters the human body. Another quite popular view, actually, all the way up to the Middle Ages, was the ancient Greek philosopher's view, Aristotle, who proposed that after conception, the menstrual blood somehow organized itself into a human being, and that would be conscious exactly 45 days after conception. And that is 45 days for boys. For girls, for some obscure reason, he thought it would take much longer, actually twice as long, so that would be 90 days. Well, as a scientist, I propose we now leave religion, philosophy aside and try to confront our thoughts with actual observations. So here we leave the dark ages, come into the Enlightenment. Leonardo da Vinci was the first to actually make observations, these wonderful drawings of the human fetus. You can see here in the uterus. But still, he was very limited to say meaningful things about anything going on in the fetus mind. And even now, with all these wonderful technologies, ultrasound permits us to see how the baby grows inside the womb, but still, what can we say about the mind? Well, we're fortunate at the University of Liège to be part of this European network where, with colleagues at the University of Tübingen, they have a wonderful machine, and you see my wife Vanessa in this quite strange position where her belly is inside this detector of magnetic waves. Because when a new uh, fetus has a change in electrical um, brain activity, this creates very small changes in magnetic fields. And they can actually capture that and then see how the brain reacts to sounds. And the results are here. Louis' brain showed clear reactions to different sounds. Actually, he could pick up when it was a new sound. You see here this red arrow showing the wave of brain activity that was observed when he said, hey, this is new. He might even be the first human fetus to show that there could be some working memory going on already during pregnancy. And this was done in the third um, term. So I think this is wonderful and really also has major ethical and clinical consequences because when we see here the first picture of little Louis and there's no sound and you can imagine he was crying. And I remember when the nurse was taking a little blood sample and he cried and she said, well, you know, don't cry, I know, it doesn't hurt you. And I was thinking, well, do you? What can we say about pain perception in newborns? Well, historically, not so long ago, when I was at university, end of the 80s, in textbooks it was written, babies, newborns are unconscious. They're just a bunch of reflexes. They can't feel pain. So even surgery was performed without giving painkillers. That luckily has changed, and now scientific studies have clearly shown that babies, newborns, can have emotions, can have pain, and so we treat them um, as should be. But still many questions remain. I mean, look at these wonderful eyes, maybe a bit subjective here, 
But to me, it's really a challenge to know what's going on behind in that beautiful brain, that beautiful mind. And again, scientific studies now offer us a glimpse of what it might be to see as a newborn. This is an app you can actually download for free, and you see here what little Louis might have seen just after birth. I don't know if you can guess what's on here. Let me help you a bit, and you see that vision, of course, in the brain of a newborn, that's an immature brain, is learning progressively to make sense of the world. Initially, it will be very blurry, and then progressively emerges this perception, adding color and all the richness of our wonderful visual world. Now, again, thanks to a European network called the Human Brain Project, where it's all about understanding consciousness and actually trying to model consciousness on computers. Now, the brain isn't a computer, the mind isn't just a software program, but I think it's wonderful with all the different colleagues throughout Europe to try and understand the emergence of the mind and how, of course, at my university in Liège, we mainly study adults. But again, thanks to collaboration with um, our friends in Israel, we have now tools to monitor what's going on. You see these three electrodes on little Louis, who again was a guinea pig, and we can see how that little brain changes depending how it interacts with the environment. You see the colors, you see time evolving every minute. In the beginning, it was like cool, all blue colors, low activity. And then something happened. You see the upper row is what we think his stress level becomes all red, very active. Then you see he's being breastfed and enjoying things. And we can try to read that out in these brain electrical recordings. And you can ex actually see this on your smartphone. So the, the image there is just a, a screen capture of my smartphone permitting to try and bridge into his wonderful mind. And wonderful it truly is, because you should know that right now, he has a number of brain cells, neurons, similar to yours and mine, billions of them. But it's really intriguing is that he's making a lot of new connections. These cells are bridging to other cells really very, very fast. We think it's about 4,000 new connections each and every second at his age. And this is just the beginning, because he will continue up to a million, nearly a million new brain connections every second. And that, I think, is just wonderful and a challenge for us to understand the developing human mind. Where maybe the historical error was to consider consciousness as all or nothing. It doesn't suddenly start. It's not black or white, but rather 50 shades of gray. It progressively emerges. And then again, we can't reduce the complexity of consciousness to just one dimension, one thing. It has many, many aspects. Maybe we could compare it to a growing diamond with more and more aspects to it that reflect all the colors of the rainbow. And the challenge for us scientists is to truly understand and explain the wonder of it all. Thank you. Thank you.